Hello everyone. I think it's live. Good. So. Come on YouTube, do you think? Yeah, right, cool. Okay, so today I'm going to be looking at Windows 11 or whatever it's going to be called. It's this is the leaked leaked build. So yeah, I think I think it's legit. Windows 10 has a lot of leaks, so comes part of the development cycle, I suppose. So we're going to have a quick look at how it all comes together. First off, we're going to try installing. So it's your standard setup. You've got, well, if you install Windows 10, you're familiar with it. Nothing special going on here. Just select your language and go for. There are some changes that have occurred, not in terms of the setup, but in terms of minimum requirements. They have made it so you need to have, well, more RAM to begin with but also you need a TPM module, version two, and it needs to be active. I just didn't put a key in here. It's not needed, it will install. If you're trying to go ahead and do this yourself, I'm gonna be installing Pro, but as you can see, the end version is still available. If that's a thing that you need, I don't know if anyone actually uses it, it's just an EU thing where some things, but as you can see, minimum requirements were not met for this machine. So I had to go into the BIOS and make a few changes, nothing too major, just make, to make sure TPM was turned on, rather than just a discrete car, because I'm not allowed to keep it turned off. So what that ended up meaning was, well, the OS is now technically encrypted. So that's a bit of a pain, because if I need to take the hard drive out and shove it into the machine to try and find something, I can't, which is, A bit of a pain. It's nice to, from a security point of view that it's on by default, much like a uh, Mac is these days. But Macs are slightly different because you're not expected to take the hard drive out, and most of them are soldered in anyway. With this, they just say it's a drive, you can just yank them out, and in all fairness, I should be able to ship another machine and revive it, which I have to do occasionally. Someone brings a machine to me and goes, I need my data off it, I haven't backed it up. Can you get it off? Sure. Yank the drive, plug it into the machine, there you go. With TPM enabled, depends how much they encrypt, it might just be the OS, I don't know if it's the personal files, but I'll have a look at that, but I'm guessing if this is by default going forward, that's gonna be a pain. Install process is pretty straightforward, exactly the same as before, nothing really happens here. So nothing too exciting. I'm just playing videos for this, so I did the install process this morning. It took about eight minutes, I think. Didn't want to bore you with everything, but this is where it starts to get different. This is the setup. Much better than the Windows 10 one. The Windows 10 one was the ugliest thing ever. The text was too big. You had to scroll constantly, but this looks like it might work on smaller screens quite well. But yeah, I had no audio here, so HDMI audio didn't work as expected. Interesting, when I select the keyboard and language, it still set me to US. Don't know why, doesn't matter, just a bug in this build, I suppose. But everything does work as expected.
and I installed this with no internet connectivity which is is I think important because you don't always have to or want to have internet access or have access to the internet when you said something up drivers are missing and that kind of thing the actual screen itself there was quite a bit of banding when the bubbles got really big and no, it's not going through okay so that's just the stream helping me out there but the animation was very janky and terrible when looking at it on the monitor but it takes a few minutes and then installed get presented get presented with your standard windows 10 screen let's just give us a head takes a few minutes like i say it's about six minutes and here you go windows 10 strange looking desktop a little bit start menus in the middle very mac so at this point i'm going to turn the camera off actually because it's just in the way in fact no one final thing there was a bug that i encountered which was quite fascinating because you get a very mac feel already here but when i installed my graphical drivers this happened as in the transparency broke and we have a now it looks like a mac about the bar at the top of course and if you go into this say uh, i was just changing the colors back to default here because messing around with that but if you this say uh, yeah so very mac like here i turned off the up turn on the auto hide and you get a very mac feel now i'm guessing this is a bug it's not supposed to look like that you're supposed to have a transparent bar down there but it seems to bug out a lot and it goes completely transparent which i don't know if they're going to have that as an option it looks kind of nice if you like the mac feel i personally not a fan of it but anyway enough about that let's actually move on to actually having a look around the OS, shall we But I'm going to turn the webcam off at this point. Actually, no, I'll leave it on. Now, I tried to find the Windows startup sound. The best I could find was the logon sound. It's a bit naff. But here we have transparency turned on. But I want to film settings. You can realign it to the left, give you more traditional feel. But I'm going to leave it centered for now. If you want to personalize it, you can. Currently, it's turned off. You can't really do a lot. Uh, this error keeps occurring down here. But I'm going to move the webcam at the top. It keeps trying to install something, but it's failing. Not important. If you want to have a dark bar down here, in this current version, you're going to have to use the dark theme or custom. Which isn't ideal. There we go. So we got a nice dark theme down the bottom. But I'm going to leave it in default light. I'm not a fan of this colour scheme, I must admit. But everything else seems to be your Windows 10 typical menu here. You might have noticed I've installed a few things already. This is the new start menu. These are your pinned items and recommended down here, which seems to be files. It's a bit tidier, I find, than what the Windows 10 one was. The all apps menu is still absolutely awful. A few bugs here, like here, most used. So it's still this horrible, useless menu from Windows 10. And interestingly, once you're on this menu, Oh no, you can. Try that yesterday, it wouldn't search. But yeah. <clears throat> so you can just type in the search. To get anything here, you must pin it though. So let's say I want to have Adobe Photoshop Express, you have to pin it to the start menu. Interestingly, when I first set it up, that was present with some pre-installed software. Well, preset it, so Adobe Express, um, Photoshop Express was present. But that's the menu. So it, it's got a bit more control than what you did on Windows 10. Still not a fan of it. 
also with it being centered i keep going down here to click it where is it down here and obviously when you have more stuff open this menu will grow so in muscle memory wise it's a nightmare Navigation menu is exactly the same as before. Nothing special going on there. In fact, the whole interface is pretty much the same as before. You may notice there's stuff like task switch and uh, people and all this stuff's gone. It's now replaced by this button, which is pretty much the same thing. Nothing special going on there. But anyway, let's have a look around. They've changed the theme on all of the icons. It looks absolutely awful, I think. You got this higgledy piggledy, very almost Linux style thing going on here. Horrible rainbow effect. I'm hoping this isn't the final version. Kind of like the icons. It's, obviously, you can tell, you know, some still in process, one drive. But I'm not a fan of this at all. I mean, some of them look nice, video looks nice, music looks nice, but all together, not great. Nothing pre installed, of course. It's all just a blank operating system. Of course, it comes with Edge. But let's have a look at little things like the control panel. Same as before, pretty much. I haven't found any real differences here. Where I have found a difference, though, is in the classic control panel. You may notice that administration tools are gone, they're still accessible. But you have to go into the start menu, so like computer management. So I'm not entirely sure why they've got rid of them. It's a bit strange. But everything else seems to still be here. So you got your programs, features, recovery, Windows 7 backup. I suspect a few of these might disappear. But everything's the same. This is all the same as before. Just the same black screen as before. Change the language down here. You've got this ho whole pastel y colour and everything now. I'm not a fan of it. I suppose I'll get used to it. Notification sounds are a bit softer as well. Is that a good thing? I don't know. You may also notice there's a massive shadow under everything as well to give everything a bit more depth. Than what was there so that's I kind of like that uh, this is why I'm going to edit this and put it up as a separate video later but let's just go through a few options I'm currently running at 1440 125% and I'm streaming as a 1080p and so far other than a few applications that don't scale at all the scaling seems to be working better now, which is great. But I want to have a look at some general software and see what actually works in a second. But everything, as you can see, is very Windows 10. In fact, the version is, if anyone's wondering, it's 10.0 21996.1. .1. which is obviously the build number. This is a dev version. You can see it's Windows 11 Pro. Nothing too special going on here, using a Ryzen Pro. So all that seems to be correct. You can tell it's still very much Windows 10 though, and still a very early version. So where is it? And I was digging around a few minutes ago. Still can't find my way around Windows 10, even to this day. Oh, it's lock screen, isn't it? Some things haven't been updated. Still got Windows 10 floating around. I mean, it is Windows 10, it's just a different skin. But before I go and look at some software, I'm going to look at some of these themes, because they look kind of nice. So we've got Windows Light, got Windows Dark, what's that look like? Ugh. Oh, that's all right, I suppose. I just found the dark theme on Windows a bit too dark. Purple. We like purple. 
Mm, it's quite nice. Captured motion. Ugh. These make me feel these are they're so Ugh, it feels a bit, a bit Windows XP. That red colour. Uh, a bit past it. Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, so the apart from the garish red, the default themes are actually quite nice. I'm going to stick with a nice dark glow. Because why not? It looks kind of gross, so we'll stick with glow. So really, that, that's all that's really here. Start menu is naff. Oh, I suppose we've got this widget menu. Not the widget menu. Ugh. It's a widget menu. So I haven't signed in. Because I didn't want, didn't want to connect this up just yet. But from what I can see, it's just your standard widgets, clocks, that kind of stuff. And judging by how this is connecting to the internet at the moment and various services that are missing, I don't expect the widget stuff to be working properly anyway. So I've omitted it for now. I might, when I do the video later, I'll have a look at that and see how that works. The store is your standard store. There's nothing special going on here. And I suppose that's really it for the OS. There's not a lot going on. Everything's pretty much Windows 10. Apart from this nice curve on the corners and a deeper shadow and a centralized start menu. But I will say it does feel cleaner overall. It seems to be slightly more refined. But when you start digging around under the hood, it is still just Windows 10 and all its problems and inconsistent mess. Let's hope they address some of that going forward. But I want to try and let's see if I can not break it, but I want to plug an Xbox 360 controller in. And I don't know how it's going to handle that. Okay, so that's the same. Sure. I swear I don't really use that. So that's the same. Let's try... You know, let's try some emulation because emulation only breaks everything. Let's try PS2. What have we got loaded in here? Let's use some ink. Uh, let's do Grand Theft because I actually own that. I just want to play this video. I'm just showing. Oh, that was the controller being plugged in sound. That was a bit delayed. So, I don't know if it's going to work, but let's see if it just works. Ew, a bit jittery. Okay, so the controller thinks... Okay. Something janky is going on there. It's now connected to the controller three times. And it thinks it's now controller three. But not entirely sure what's going on there. Well, that didn't take long to break it, did it? Ooh, okay, so that software one's fine on Windows 10. Clearly on Windows 11 there is something missing and broken. So there's some software stuff that's been changed. Don't know what. But that's annoying. I've had that window before where it's got stuck. Okay, that's completely crashed, hasn't it? No. It's stuck on controller 3. Well done. Ugh. 
It's a bit purple. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is it? Really? Access to nine? Sure. I seem to have broken it. Okay, while we're here. Same task manager before, nothing special. Can't end a task at all. Fine, I didn't take long, did it? Let's do a restart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of the icons have changed, the task manager icon's quite nice, I hadn't noticed that. See where it gets stuck restarting, doesn't restart, isn't it? Okay, so that's a good sign. Now I've had some, I don't know if it's graphics drivers or what, but the video capture device seems to have some slightly with Windows 11. Um, don't know what it is. So if it's juddering, it's not juddering, so that's good. You hear the little ding, that's actually the Windows startup sound. The startup sound isn't installed, it's just a ding at the moment, which is a bit weird. Okay, where's Steam? I opened you, Steam. There it is. Okay, there it is. Okay, so it's a bit buggy. No shock. Uh, I, don't, I don't like this sensor thing at all. Not great. Okay, well, we broke. We broke it doing that. So, I'm curious about any performance changes. Oh, that's horrible looking, isn't it? Look at that. Ugh. Okay, is that gonna start? Okay, it's gotta install. Okay, so there's, you know what this feels like? It feels like I'm using Linux. There's a lot of focus losing issues going on here. It's not, that's, that's not the bad mouth of Linux. I like Linux, I use it a lot. But you find that everything's not quite as polished as it could be. And that's kind of what I'm feeling here, which is fine. And you've got these horrible, bubbly, like, uh, icons everywhere. And it's like, I'm not a fan of it. Again, the same feeling as I got when I started to use Vista the first time. It looks ugly. And for whatever reason, it seems to be a bit slow. Oh, I can't open the task manager right click in there, that's annoying. You gotta do control delete. Now, it shouldn't be, it's got enough speed. Also, this new fonts, it's not doing it for me. Using my 3 gig RAM, nothing too special, but everything just seems Maybe it's these animations, but everything just seems just a little slow. Well, let's, let's not do that. It's way too bloody long. Let's do wildlife. Nice and short, nice and quick. Let's see what performance we get at difference. This is just an APU, it's a different special game, so don't expect amazing results. There's no graphics card installed in here at all. Take your time, why not? Okay. 
hill. We should get to about 2,800-ish. Which is what I get on Windows 10 using this APU. So let's see, shall we? Performance looks about the same. I mean, it's not the best benchmark they've done, but it's nice and quick, which is why I use it a lot. I know it's designed for mobile devices, but whatever. Okay, let's see what we get. Wait, did I misread? Did I misread my bench own benchmarks? Sorry, we're supposed to get 8,612-ish. So we've got 8,000... Okay, so performance-wise, it's within margin of error. Slightly better, even. I have a feeling the video device has got out of sync. It happens occasionally. But it seems to have happened more often than not on this one. Okay, so that works fine. I'm going to plug the controller in again. <laughs> Try. Ugh, that color scheme is horrible. I'm gonna try this little game here. Okay. Yeah, 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 we get it. Hasn't done the same things before, so maybe it was just during the installation of the drives where we completely lost it. Okay, let's check the settings. Let's just turn everything down to low. Now I'm hearing an audio delay. That's a bit weird. Let's get that. Oh. Okay, we'll take it back. It's gone to controller two now. And that has promptly crashed. So I think we have problems. So for whatever reason, playing games on here is just not an option. Where is it? I can I just right click and kill it? Well, I must admit, this isn't quite turning out how I planned it to. I was hoping to do some performance comparison and have a mess around with some of the features. There we just got constant crashes, which let's be honest, is anyone really surprised? I'm not. Well, joyous. It could just be the controller causing the problem. Because... That's dead, isn't it? Where 
vidieť. System item, OK. Fine, let's try. We're going to get to Zabin. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to do it. So that's two pieces of software that have had a hard crash, both graphical. Both have required a restart. That's fun. Oh. I mean, it looks nice. So, who knows what they're going to call it. I mean, this is in the um, in the settings, it's called Windows 11 Pro. But I suspect they'll call it Windows uh, Next Generation or NX or some nonsense like that. Not entirely sure what, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, they might not even call it Windows. Because Windows 10 was the last Windows. Oh. That was different to before. The interesting that startup sound, I couldn't find that um, WAV file. What does it matter? Okay, let's try something that might completely break this. Use PC market, so run through various bits of software, LibreOffice, that kind of stuff, and I think this will highlight anything software wise that will cause a problem. But so far, it's just Windows 10. We have a funky skin and a very broken task manager. Yeah, uh, no, we don't want to run the full test. Have you got Light Extended Express? Yes, yeah, do Express. 18 minutes. Oh. Okay, well, while that's doing that, I'm going to install. Oh, it's not called Classic Shell anymore, is it? It's called Open Shell. Do it every time. Uh, releases. Now, when Windows. 10 came out and was like in various testing versions there was this kind of like fight against people doing the classic shell or whatever and every update it used to break it it seemed to have stopped doing it eventually but I have no idea what it's going to do with this one because obviously it's going to be a completely different menu so I don't know if it's just going to like sit on top of it and break it or do something, you know, I don't want classic IE going away. These faces are going to keep popping up, so just ignore it. So only by focus, um, focus losing. Ugh, garish. Sure, now, I don't know what that's done. So if I click the start menu, it should load up classic shell. Nah. Oh. Okay. Yay, we can have both of them at the same time. That's fun. Hang on, so. What with the focus? Jeez. It's left to line it. Okay, I'm just messing around here. Can we have two on top of each other? Yes. Okay, so it hasn't actively blocked classic shell. Open shell, whatever it's called. Which is great news. So if you are not a fan of this. Okay, that's getting confusing. I've got to, okay, I can't I can't use the Windows key to bring that, that start menu. I've gotta do I've gotta click that. And that does that. So that's good. 
as administration. No, it's just loading straight up. Windows Tools. Wait, have we got, is it Windows Tools now? Oh, you know what I said, administration options are gone. It's now in Windows Tools. Oh wow, that's that's bad, isn't it? Oh, it's because classic shell. Oops. Okay, let's go and uninstall that, shall we? Because look what that's done. That's made a mess of things. It's half the fun, isn't it? Oh no, classic shell. Don't do that to me. Okay, let's uninstall it. Uh, good job, I know. I'm getting confused what I'm doing here. Doesn't help the fact that I keeps stealing focus. I mean, if it's going to break, it's going to break while I'm doing all these things together. Uh, where is it? Programs and features. So you, here you can kind of see the depth on the shadow. It's quite pronounced. It's quite nice. Sure. Do your thing. Right. So that's that. It hasn't made a mess of this. Look at that. Or has it? Or was that just was that just Windows Ten looking naff? You know what? I don't know. Looks pretty awful though. I'm kind of. Oh, they've got this thing where you can change the layout down here, but then you kind of don't have the options you had before. So, yeah, that's a little tidier. Defrag. <laughs> What's that look like these days? Ah, oh, boring. What's the resource mines look like? Is it the classic stuff? Yeah. So, go digging around, you'll find Windows 7 stuff in here. Very NT4 looking graphs. I mean, it's not a bad thing. People complain about the fact that. All this stuff is the old dialogues. And yeah, I get it. I mean, you got some really old stuff in here. Apparently WordPad has been relegated to Windows tools. Very odd. Anyway. One thing I did want to show was paint has been restored. So much for getting rid of it. So that that's good news. So we have paint again. Well, I say again, it was obviously never gone, but the version appears to have been updated, so that's good. And from what I can tell, paint 3D's gone. So <laughs> yes. That nonsense is gone. Of course, got classic notepad. Alarms and clocks, which is just your simple clock app. Calculator is still here. Still as buggy as ever, from what I can tell. The photo app is the same as always. No, I don't want to sign to a Microsoft account. At least not after this. Mail, standard, nothing fancy going on here. Calendar, easy calendar. So, nothing's really changed here from Windows 10 in terms of the applications on offer. Yeah. You may notice that Photoshop Express is installed, that's because it was in the start menu when I first started up and I accidentally clicked it. After that, no other applications 
have appeared there, so I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. Well, you know what, so far so good. This hasn't crashed. I was kind of expecting it to die horribly. Well. So there is some stability here. I mean, to try and break it. I don't like these animations though. Didn't I turn them off? Give me a gimp. I mean, you can see the animations uh, for the popping in and out. They're much longer than what they were before. So that might not be to your taste. It's very, it's very Apple. You know, big long animations for things that should almost be instant. It just makes everything feel just a bit sluggish and slow. I'm hoping there are some settings to tweak that. I mean, there are some settings to turn them off, of course. Uh, if you go into... No, not in there. Uh, how do I get into there now? It's finger windows 10. I always find... It screws with your muscle memory a bit. So, in performance settings... I suppose we can turn them all off and see what happens. See if that's linked to anything. Was that there before? That wasn't there before, was it? I swear that wasn't there before. Whatever. But yeah, okay, so if you turn them off, you can get back to it more instant things but oh they were turned on turn those back on wonder why they, they turn themselves off yeah let's leave the shadow on okay well this is annoying me so let's turn this off Everything else seems to be in order. The, all the software installed by itself, so drivers and stuff, I didn't have to do anything, so at least that's all working. Yeah, we don't care, go away. Yeah, don't wanna do that. So, I was thinking this video was gonna be longer, if I'm honest. But there was less here to look at than I thought. I have managed to completely break it in places. I think that might be open shell. So I'm gonna give it another quick restart. Let's see what damage I've done. I mean, when installing software and stuff, it seemed pretty stable. But as you can see, when I started using the Xbox 360 controller, it had issues. Okay, so the startup stand is present. It's not very intrusive, I kind of like it. So what I want to do... I don't know if I've got anything installed on here that's keyboard and mouse based. I've got Fortnite New Vegas installed, but it's probably not a very good test. I want to see if we can actually get into a game of some sort. That will actually... Oh, Island Isolation. That, that will work. Can't see why not. I've got a feeling it was the controller causing the issues, but if this crashes out, let's turn and fix that nonsense, have I? Let me turn the capture device down because that's kind of loud. Let's 
It's not what I wanted, Microsoft. I don't even know how I did that. I pressed out and enter. Try that again. Does out and enter not work anymore? It does, it's just really now. Okay, so. There's a save game on here, but appears to be. It's probably just my standard benchmark run. Well, so far so good. We have first game has actually worked. It's at least nobody crashes it. Nope, that didn't crash. Frame rate's a bit janky, but. I haven't got any side to put in to actually see exactly what it's doing. That seems slower and more sluggish than normal. So, yeah. Some games do work. So, honestly, not worth... You can try shooting if you want. It's not really worth downloading this, other than just a bit of professional curiosity. I will probably put an edited video together to show a few things in more detail. This is just a quick look and mess around. Let's go find someone to shoot me. Actually, let's not do that because then you have to reload the game. Let's just quit. So, okay, so some things do work. So it's not like a, a graphical issue going on. It was, it was appeared to be the controller causing an issue. Or something to do with drivers, or who knows what. It is a leaked build, so it is a dev build. There's no shock that it's buggy as hell. It, it works. I had more issues. This is a positive. I've had more issues when I installed Windows Vista first time, and I had more issues when I installed Windows 10 more first time. I had so many blue screens, so many issues. So the fact that this is stable-ish is a good thing because stability is much better than anything else because at the end of the day an operating system isn't important. You just want your software on it to run correctly. No one cares about the operating system behind it. You know, all these nice little animations and curves and transparency. To be honest, you only look at them like 1%, 2% of the time rest of the time you're going to be using the software you want to use. So, this is good. It seems a little bit more refined than Windows 10. They're bringing stuff together visually. And hopefully, moving forward, they will, I would say, get rid of the classic control panel eventually, but I, I can't see that ever happening. There is stuff in there that is... 30 years old in places. I mean, some of the code might be more than that. They're not going to rewrite all that. There's no point. It works. As long as it works, I don't care what it looks like. Just make it easier to get to rather than having to bury it in the old control panel, which, unless you put the control panel on the desktop, the only way to really get to it is when it appears up there. Or you literally type in the control panel. So, I personally don't think that's acceptable at all. These options are still required and still used. Less so in some cases. I mean, like, power options still exist here. But they exist also in the settings, so there's some overlap. And the problem I have with the overlap as well is, in the new versions, they've lost features. They gain some features, but they lose others. So, I'm hoping that... Windows 11 will draw a line under Windows 10 and actually get on with fixing the core problems with it. Annoyingly, the privacy settings seem to be as naff as before, but going forward, hopefully, we will see some improvements. I mean, I wish they wouldn't have included stuff like this. Widgets are nice, but they did gadgets in Windows Vista, which transferred over to Windows 7. That that was enough. 
Honest to God, that was enough. A nice widget that you could dump somewhere, do what you want with it. Putting it in this menu of nonsense that you require to sign in for. This is Hill. At least things like Cortana and stuff have vanished. I'm sure she's still here somewhere. Don't know where. That's another thing. The um, the start mm -hmm. menu doesn't always open when you open it. So if I was navigating around here, then I press the start menu. It did work then, but it closed this menu, but didn't open that. That's a problem I've seen a lot of. But that, that would be fixed. Oh, she still is here. Does she work? Ugh. Voice assistance. Should be an accessibility option, and that's about it. So, yeah, that's all I'm going to show today. I was hoping to maybe show a few other things, but performance wise, I can't really show comparisons because some of the software's not working. But it looks nice. I'm kind of liking this purple theme. I don't like the dark aspect of it, so in fact, this just. One final thing. Can I? I just thought that's the point. Is there other well, pictures in here? Ugh. Okay, green. Is that changing all the accents? No, it's not. It's staying purple. Sure. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to check. I wanted to go on custom. No, the wrong way around. Yeah, you know what? I think that looks better. You still got the dark. But the light, I find the light theme works better here because they haven't got the dark theme quite right. It's It jumps backwards and forwards between dark and light all the time and the dark is too dark. And they haven't got proper contrast on various pop-up windows which you saw before. It's still got that garish yellow which doesn't work with the dark and the blues and it doesn't work. So still a lot of Windows 10 nonsense. The scaling seems to work better. But that is it. For now, I'll do an edited video and put it up later. This is just the unedited version of me just digging around in here. But if anyone watched.